Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Red Reflex. Today, we are going to embark on a captivating exploration of human awareness and decision-making through the lenses of our head, heart, and gut intelligence. The idea behind these three sources of awareness is that they complement each other and collectively contribute to how we make decisions. In this episode, I'm so glad to have again with us our work bestie, Crystal, who's going to share with us you know, and explain to us the intricate interplay of these three sources of awareness that guides us in our decision-making process. Crystal, you know, um, you know, when I first also, when mm. we chatted about this topic, yes. uh, it reminded me of this quote by Jeff Bezos mm-hmm. where he says, all of my best decisions in business and in life have been made with heart, intuition, guts, mm-hmm. not analysis. 1,000%. Yeah. And so, Crystal, maybe can you share with us the concept of hate, heart and gut intelligence and sure. how they contribute to our decision-making process? Yeah, absolutely. So since time immemorial, we have known from Eastern cultures that it's not just about your head. We have other centers of decision-making. We also have a heart that feels. We also have a gut, which is the seat of our instinct, uh, which allows us to protect ourselves, to really access our intuition. So um, when we talk about this three brains, right? <laughs> Now with Western advances in neuroscience, we now know that research validates this, that we actually do have three separate brain structures in our body. We used to think that uh, only our brain cells reside in our head. And what we know now is that there are neurons, there are ganglia, that there are transmitters that reside not just in our head, but also separate structures in our heart and also in our gut. So we already have three separate distinct brains. And... Um, When we talk about leadership or coaching, for example, um, there are many models that talk about these three different types of intelligence, right? So head intelligence stands for um, your strategy, your logic, your planning, your analysis. Yeah, absolutely. And then when we talk about your heart intelligence, by the way, I should say, head intelligence is very much about thinking. Mm. And then the remainder two intelligences, the heart and the gut, they are very much sensing mm. intelligences. Yeah. So the second one, the heart intelligence, it's about checking in with your values, your feelings, what are you projecting and what are you receiving on an emotional level in any situation. It's about also your compassion. And uh, w- when then we talk about your gut intelligence, that That's really the seat of your courage. It is to do with instinct. It is to do sometimes with impulse. Mm. It is sometimes to do with uh, uh, pulling the trigger on something that uh, you know you need to make a bold decision about. um, Accessing that courage, that. self-preservation also in other words yeah so how can we develop critical thinking Mm -hmm. analytical skills to enhance our head intelligence yeah so um for me head intelligence involves strategic thinking it involves uh being able to uh actually think about uh issues in more than just one dimension for instance we can think about issues in terms of their breadth. Mm. We can say, okay, not just for today, but how will this impact next week, next year, three years time, five years time, right? So we can use our brain to plan. Uh, We can use our brain to analyze. So for instance, if you are coming to me with a problem, Rach, instead of just saying, fix this fire, I might say, well, let's look deeper to analyze, ask the five whys, what is Mm. the root cause of this issue. So we can use our brain to go really deep. We can use our brain to also think about um, sort of systemic implications of what we're looking at. For instance, you come to me with an issue, you say, Chris, I need funding for this project (laughs) and I want to buy this computer system. And then we can use our brain to think, well, how about how does this impact other departments? How does this cause implications uh, for the end user? What kind of other facets do we have to think about? So brain is really uh, about developing those critical thinking and strategic thinking abilities. I love that. And also I think just hearing what you have explained, I think one potential downfall of mm. over relying on our hate intelligence mm. is that we may get to you know analysis paralysis yes. when we need to make decisions. Absolutely. How how do we <laughs> overcome that? Yeah, that's why we're exactly why we are moving into this um, heart 
and gut intelligence because the head tends to think and you can think yourself in to problems, you can think yourself out of them, you can go round in circles and you can get stuck if your entire decision making is too overweighted to that one dimension mm. of just head. Whereas for instance, like I spoke about the gut intelligence is that instinct and that courage that really pulls the trigger when you draw on your gut intelligence for example it gives you that um, impulse mm. to kind of take risks right yeah. that's a very different dimension so i guess like for most of us we tend to overweight one modality mm. some people i've seen many uh leaders that i work with who are very analytical stem leaders you know engineering background and they overuse the head intelligence and everything is logic 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 and then they come to me and they say i don't understand why nobody stays in my team mm. i don't understand why people keep on leaving i don't understand how to have a difficult conversation because it's just all head and they treat other people like you know robots right yeah. and we we know that most of decision making is actually emotional and gut focused right Daniel Kahneman yes. for example Nobel Prize winning uh, behavioral economist did all this work about system one system two thinking right so we know that actually if you think that decisions are mostly made from logic you are sorely mistaken wow. human beings mostly make decisions from a place of emotions yeah right? yeah so so anyway whichever one we overuse is the one that we should mistrust mm. I have a lot of people who come to me like and and they are super emotional they keep on people pleasing you know they do whatever feels comfortable for them and i would say well you because you overuse your emotional intelligence you need to distrust that one and you need to actually play up on the rest you need to make more time to reweight re the other two yeah. senses right and some people for instance are all gut they yeah. are impulsive you, they they make decisions and you're like why did you do that i don't know i just did it right i just feel like i just felt I just, like it i just felt like it oh i just had this like sense I, and i just did it they can't even explain why those kind of people maybe need to tune into more head intelligence mm. so it's not a one size fits all thing but it's a really good way of checking in what are my blind spots what am i overusing and it's just like going to the gym we yes. want to exercise our muscles yes. and sometimes our brain muscles or our heart muscles or whatever gut muscles are like overused yeah. and then the other muscles are atrophied we can yeah yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, moving on to the next intelligence, which is the heart intelligence, yes. emotional intelligence. Yes. How can we cultivate, you know, emotional awareness yeah. uh, and empathy to strengthen this part, the yes. heart? Yes. So um, let me give you a practical example. Let's say I have a colleague and they are really not performing. They're not pulling their weight. The head intelligence could say to me, oh, Crystal, you need to go and speak to Rachel and tell her she's not performing on her targets and tell her exactly what it is that she needs to buck up on. That's the head, right? The KPIs, the task focus. But however, if I tune into my heart yeah. before this conversation, I might actually be able to feel compassion for you feel empathy and, and say to myself, okay, I'm going to go to this conversation with Rachel. Hang on. Let me put myself in Rachel's shoes for a moment. What is she going through? What kind of emotions, you know, is, mm. might she be feeling during this conversation? How do I need to hold space to wow. create this psychological safety for Rachel so that she feels that I care for her? Um, how do I connect as a leader to my empathy, to mm. my compassion? How do I be mindful of what emotions I'm transmitting and what emotions I'm receiving from Rachel. Because the emotional intelligence is like broadcast and receiving channel. We are always transmitting and receiving and actually playing off this loop of mm. other people's emotions. Like for example, if I can feel during the meeting that you're getting nervous or anxious and I can sense that using my emotional intelligence, I may want to say something mm. to reassure you or to say, Rachel, I don't mean to uh, come across as dot, dot, dot. Let right. me share with you my intention. Yeah, or maybe if I feel during the meeting, I'm getting agitated or I'm getting annoyed and I'm getting triggered by something, that's emotional intelligence. Mm. I can say, Crystal, you're getting a bit triggered. Maybe it's time for you to take a deep breath and pause 
before you blurt out something you might regret. Wow. Yeah, so emotional intelligence is super important uh, during every situation, not just in work, but in life, in relationships, in relationships yeah. right? I think it makes us also a lot more, you know, influential and mm. effective in that sense, right? Because it's not just coming in, like you said, sometimes if we only rely on the head, we may come across cold-hearted, right? Yes. So like people who really understand emotional intelligence understand how to create this environment of trust and safety because they can sense right. when other people have that emotional need when they are insecure when they're anxious and then they know how to vibe those mm. reassuring calming feelings mm. to other people to you know take care of them emotionally so it's a bit of that balance yeah. because you know in work we need empathy mm. as well as boundaries wow. we need relationship focus as well as task focus it cannot be like too much on one or the other right so it's always like working it's intertwined synerg yes synergistically yeah and also you know what i love about uh, what you mentioned earlier about the heart intelligence is also that it involves our core values mm, absolutely so could you share with us an example on how we can also align you know our core values to emotional intelligence especially when it comes to making decisions a lot of people write to me every weekend during my <laughs> ama they say i don't know whether to stay i don't know whether to go should i take on this job or not so korea is a big decision uh, and i would normally advise them too many people get stuck in just the head they go pros and cons right. and their only way of well, making the analysis. Is just sort analysis it's just like okay draw a line what are the pros yeah. what are the cons right but if you really want to have a more holistic way of thinking of your career firstly it's about that head of course you do your SWOT analysis not that it's not good it's very important your pros yeah. and your cons but then i want you to also then find a quiet space and uh tune in to what your core values are like a simple way of doing this is for instance make a list of like three four five leaders who really represent to you people whom you admire for their careers you think they're these people are just killing it at work mm -hmm. every time i see them i'm filled with longing or even envy like mm -hmm. you know uh, of their careers now envy is a very important uh, emotion envy uh, actually serves the function of highlighting to us this is my heart desires right. these are my values right so a lot of people feel like oh I shouldn't be jealous I shouldn't be envious why not mm. just tap into that and actually see what it is the root values of that and what person what reflects about your, your desires exactly so then this would allow you to really crystallize what your own sort of code of values are because otherwise it's very hard to kind of think yeah. of like what are my values and I would say like Think of about five core values that uh, really symbolize success to you in your career. Um, so, for example, if it's work-life balance, if it's freedom, financial freedom, for example, if it's like innovation, if it's creativity, then you need to find a career that fulfills Encompasses these history. dimensions. Yeah, for right. sure. Right. Yeah. So, Crystal, you know, when it comes to heart intelligence, how mm. can we strike a balance between empathy and mm. practicality yeah so i think it's about boundaries mm. and boundaries are actually really interesting because um boundaries help us uh, integrate our head and our gut intelligence so that we kind of inoculate ourselves uh, against like bleeding heart mentality <laughs> right because sometimes those of us who have natural high levels of empathy we can have this like too much or yeah. too much empathy so we can try to you know take on too many people's perspectives and always say yes to everyone do all that people pleasing and then it becomes really harmful at work yeah yeah because we don't know how to where hold to the, draw line. the line yeah. yeah absolutely so this is where uh, we need the head and the gut intelligence to come in so let me give you an example let's say my boss has asked me to uh, volunteer 
or rather volunteered me for <laughs> volunteer. volunteer me for a project, uh, which is a thankless project, right? Maybe it's something that involves uh, me uh, organizing some sort of social event. It's a non KPI, non promotable sort of like task that everyone in the department already said no, 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 not me, <laughs> right? And maybe my heart wants to say yes and to mm. please, and I feel bad for my boss, and I feel like I really want to help my boss. This is where the head and the gut comes in. So. The gut, we, we talked about the the gut sensing and the gut being an instinctual sort of courageous self preservation part of us. The moment the boss says, "Rage, I want to volunteer you for this project," if we're really paying attention, probably something went on in your gut、mm. where you felt like, like. You mean physically? Yeah,、right? it could be even physically、wow. like a contraction, like ugh, this is not for me, right? And you might have heard your voice come out on autopilot and go, "Okay," but actually, <laughs> you know, for the people pleasers in us. But yes, actually, we're、me. really pay- paying attention. There was something that happened in our gut, like、mm. a contraction that clenched, that went like, "Ugh," yeah, and that's almost like a like a like a sure sign that this is not actually your truth. Wow. You said yes, but that wasn't your truth. Wow. Right. So in that moment, then your head intelligence needs to come in. Pretty damn fast, yeah. And start actually talking head intelligence language centers in a skillful and strategic way to protect you from your heart. Wow. Yeah. So I may in that instant going, hang on, I'm really sorry. I spoke first without analyzing. Do you mind if I take forty eight hours to think about this, boss, before I come back and 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 give you my definitive yes or no? So that's my gut and my head protecting me. From the impulse of my heart. Amazing.、Yeah. That's how the three aspects are at play. Yes. And yes. and this leads us very nicely into、mm-hmm. you know coming to the gut intelligence、mm. now, which is really all about instincts, right? Yes. Usually, this is something that is you know seen as more airy fairy, like oh. Oh no, but Rich,、yeah. I used to work on the trading floor. Yeah. In an investment bank, right? Many of the best traders, they t- they they would not be able to explain logically what made them buy and sell so fast. Like they can just look at a Bloomberg and be able to see something is not right about this. Exit the positions. Let's let's actually let let's slow down our buying or let's actually get out of this position. Yeah. They cannot even tell you because it was a gut instinct. Wow. Yeah, because the gut is also like it 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 holds all these experiences. Yes, and that's yes. why I wanted to ask、mm. because for me I tend to rely also a lot on gut and sometimes、yes. I find it hard to explain certain、yes. decisions. And is it true that actually our gut intelligence is actually、uh-huh. you know. Taking scores of like the different data points that we have actually been collecting along the way,、yes. that leads us also then to finally, you know, making a decision based on our gut. Yes, I mean the gut is also our access to our subconscious. So、oh. let, let let me give you an example.、Um, I firmly believe the body stores every experience like a hard disk drive that's ever happened to you, even though your brain may not have that conscious access to it. So let let's say that when you were Seven years old, you had a painful experience with a person that looked like you know a tall curly head、uh, person. Okay, you may not even remember that experience anymore, right?、Mm. Um, but then let's say like somebody came into the room and immediately you felt like this kind、right. of like misgivings about this person, and this like it could be that on a felt sense your body was remembering. Yeah, like some this, stored muscle memory. This subconscious experience, like pattern recognition, that 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 there's something about this that triggered your self-protective mechanisms. Now, gut is not necessarily accurate. Yeah. So not necessarily fair or accurate, but sometimes can provide you another source of data that is just kind of like saying, like, wake up. There's something about this situation that is kind of like triggering this activation response, and we just need to. Have a look at that.、Mm. Sometimes it's、uh, you know something that may be not valid, and sometimes it may be indeed something that you need to pay attention to. Wow,、mm. and especially in a world today that really prides you know or prioritizes、mm-hmm. data-driven choices.、Mm-hmm. To those of us out there who might be skeptical, but、mm-hmm. how can we you know、um, overcome the skepticism or resistance to also rely or start listening to our gut intuition? The gut is something that pulls the trigger. 
on taking risks, wow. right? So let me give you an example. Like when people ask me, I want to leave my job. I don't feel like uh, this is the right job for me. A lot of times they've done the analysis, the head, you know, why it doesn't work out, and yeah. then the heart, they have feelings, but then they, are, they remain stuck. They cannot pull the trigger because they lack the courage mm. to do it. Mm. So gut intelligence is also the ability to tap into your courage and your ability to take risks and to actually feel this is right for me. And like an analogy that I like to use is like, you know, when you have these trapeze artists in a circus yes. and then they're like swinging from one bar to another bar yes. and it's impossible to swing and have momentum unless you let go of this bar before you hold the next. onto the next bar. And a lot of people, they want to hold on to this bar, cling on and then hold on to the other bar mm. and then they're stuck mm. holding on to both bars. Oh, they get and pulled they, apart. Yeah, yeah, they get pulled apart. They can't actually move on. And the gut intelligence is what says to you, Rachel, let go, fling yourself into the unknown. This is not a slowly, slowly process, but sometimes we have to fling ourselves into the unknown and surrender into destiny, wow. into what the universe has lying for us. And this is not a head thing. The head will say, watch out, watch out. This doesn't make any sense. The heart will say, oh, this feels weird. It is the gut that actually speaks up and says, let go and do it now. Wow. This is the decisive time for you. How can we then hone our intuitive abilities? Yeah, I think it's very important to create space to get out of the busyness, what I call the tyranny of the mind. Yes. You know, when we're in work mode, we're always thinking, thinking, thinking. And that's why like mindfulness practices, journaling, reflection, contemplation, spirituality, these are all um, ways in which we open up a slice of time mm. and we move from thinking and doing into being and sensing mode. And this is where we can really tune in to what does my heart feel? What is my instinct or my gut or my intuition tell me what's right for me? Uh, so, so it's firstly about making space. Mm. My practice normally is to take a bath. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I actually like to take a bath because you know when you're in a bath, right? Yeah. When you're in water, you cannot have any digital tech devices, devices yeah. and all of that. And it's a great way to make that space for these sometimes um, these other forms of wisdom to emerge. I was at Wisdom 2.0, which is uh, in uh, in Singapore, a big mindfulness conference. I was. Uh, listening to a world-famous mindfulness teacher, a meditation master whom, uh, you know, I was very lucky to collaborate with once, Jack Cornfield. Have you heard of Jack? Yes. Yeah, he runs Spirit Rock. Wow. In, uh, yeah, so Jack was on stage and he did this amazing uh, meditation where he got everyone in Suntec City in that room to close their eyes. And then he told them to imagine that there was a very wise person Okay, and like bring their face to mind. It's like, could be Mother Teresa or Dalai whoever, Lama, whoever yeah, la. Yeah. You know, they're coming to mind. And then they were about to give you some wisdom. And uh, when at the count of three, you were going to imagine yourself looking at your hands. You mm. open your hands and then inside, there is this message of wisdom, which is mm. the answer to what you were hoping to know. So he finished this beautiful meditation. He asked everyone to open their eyes and so many people were weeping. Wow. They had received such amazing messages. So uh, he then asked the audience, okay, so uh, who came to you? And of course, you know, oh, my, my, my dead mom, my Mother Teresa, whatever, yeah. Dalai Lama, all these people came to me and they gave me this message. So he asked them, okay, what was the message? Oh, she told me to move on, forgive myself. She told me to quit my job. She told me to leave this relationship or whatever. So they all were sharing the wisdom. Then Jack looked at them and they said, okay, so who gave you this wisdom? And then everyone said, oh, Mother Teresa, my mother, whatever. And then Jack was like, no, who gave you this wisdom? No, Mother Teresa. <laughs> and then after a while, wow. somebody at the back said, me. Myself. It was me. Yeah. And then all of them started saying, ah, it was me. And Jack said, yes, it was you. Was Mother Teresa in the room? No. Is your dead mother in the room? No, she's not in Suntec City. The answers are within you. And actually, it is not about searching outside the world for these answers, but the process is about unblocking the barriers that you've placed between yourself 
and the answers you seek. Wow. And that is an inward journey. And looking inward. Yeah. And then also, I love that story because I think it's also about raising our consciousness yeah. to, you know, like you said, the inner uh-huh. wisdom that is already within mm-hmm. us, whether cognitively, mm-hmm. emotionally, or even intuitively. Yeah, and when sometimes when I run my retreats, people will say to me, like, when you were teaching me, it wasn't like I was learning something new. It was a remembering. It was a coming home to myself. And I feel like so good when they say that. Because yeah. it's true, we have the answers, Rach. Yeah. But sometimes we get so busy and we get like, we, we push our energy outside of ourselves and we give our energy away to you, to you, to you, to the situation, to the problem and everything. And then we forget to turn our attention and energy inwards and actually direct all of this capacity and all of this critical faculties and healing powers and wisdom to ourselves. Wow. And that's why back to the Jeff mm-hmm. Bezos quote, which mm-hmm. I really love. You yes. know, he really says the best decisions in work and in mm-hmm. life for him are made not with analysis, yes. but intuition and emotion. To wrap this up, do you have any last advice for us as we also want to raise our consciousness uh, in this area? Yeah, I think it's not a a solitary process. I think for Mm. us to raise our level of awareness, we really need people around us who know us well uh, to give us their perspectives as well. So I used to be a very head-focused leader and with a background of gut informing me. Um, So what really helped me in my leadership and and work was talking constantly to people who are more heart-centered leaders than me. They were able to be much more empathic, compassionate, and sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm going to fire this person or this, this doesn't make sense and it'll be like we'll see it from that person's perspective and like tune into your compassion so just giving you reminders yes how about for yourself Rach? yeah and for me you know I, I tend to also rely more on my heart and gut yes. and that's why I find while you were sharing I find that okay it brings back to you know it reminds me of why I tend to surround myself with people or leaders who are uh-huh. more head intelligent yes. and I rely on them also for the extra perspective and wisdom yes yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, sometimes also the gut type of people, the people who are just like, oh yeah, Crystal, just go for it. Just do it. Don't think <laughs> Don't so overthink. much. Don't overthink. Just yeah. like, you know, actually, when you were challenging me to do the TikTok and I was telling you, oh, all, totally. the, reasons, all the reasons why TikTok doesn't make sense for me. And then you yeah. were just like, Crystal, just do it. Just yeah. do it. And then just I was one like, a day. Just one a day. That was like the that kick the gut in. Okay, la, whatever. I just heck care. Just do it. So we need support from our community to yeah. really liberate us in terms of getting out of a rut in our thinking wow. and actually to challenge our perspectives and to give us the blessings of their own unique gifts. Yeah, yeah. and I think at the same time, it also mm-hmm. then sharpens us, mm-hmm. you know, to which perhaps which muscle we tend to be weaker in, yes. you know, and then also it helps us in elevate ourselves. And I think that's so important. Mm-hmm. Any other last words that you have for us in this area? I think just remember that we contain multitudes. We are complex creatures. And one last thing I wanted to say is that never feel afraid to speak from your different intelligences. Understanding that we have these different modes, it uh, allows other people to also get uh, where you're coming from. And that sometimes just sharing with people, this is not easy conversation because sometimes these three intelligences may say different things. Mm. But I think by being able to articulate to other people what your process is, what your intention is, and how you're thinking about this, ultimately, I feel that people tend to have more trust in you and more respect because you are taking the time to like explain to them your thinking process rather than just saying like, this is the way it is, Rach, you take it or leave it. I know, I love that. Can you share the example of how... On one of your coaches. Oh, yes. Coaching. Yes. Yeah. So um, I was coaching an entrepreneur, and very common with founders, they go into business with their best friends, and then they have this long history. And then uh, after some time, they uh, find it very difficult to have business conversations and hold the other party accountable, right? Because everything's been so he he ha ha and like mm. so informal or whatever. So, like, I was coaching this founder to be able to say to this other person, look, if I were to put on my friend hat, Here's what I want I want to say. I want to say I have so much gratitude. You're my best friend. We've been doing this together. You've always had my back. And you know, so I, I asked him to speak from his friend hat, you know, for a while. And then after that say, and at the same time, I also need to have potentially quite a hard and difficult 
business conversation, which is all about numbers. I hope you forgive me if I change modes and I move to uh, putting on my business thinking analysis hat on and uh, you know, uh, talk now about some dis difficult decisions we need to make for the business. So when he was able to kind of like speak from yeah. both, it gave him the confidence because otherwise he was just being very binary. He was yeah. like, I can't bring this up because he's my friend. Mm. Yeah. Yet I also have obligations yes. to the business. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, Crystal, thank you so much <laughs> for your wisdom. That has been so inspiring. And as always, we would love to hear what your key takeaways are. Leave us a comment. And you can always find Crystal on social media. She's everywhere. Tell us. Um, I'm on TikTok, <laughs> I'm on Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn and yes. all under the handle Crystal, L-I-M-L-A-N-G-E, Crystal Lim Langa, one word, no spaces. Yes, and once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you have liked this episode, please share it with your friends or you think that anyone uh, also would benefit from hearing it, please share it. So we'll see you again soon. This is Crystal and Rich signing off. See Bye. you. Bye.